is fine. There has been rumors floating around for a couple of weeks now that LG was looking to shut down their phone manufacturing. On April 5th, LG made it official. While it was not necessarily surprising, it's still sad to see them leave the phone space. As for the phones they were slated for release later this year, such as the LG V70, G10, Velva 2, and others, they will not see their big debut. Even the experimental LG rollable, which is confirmed and given a release date, will not see the light of day. According to the roadmap given by LG, we are looking at a final date of July 31st for everything to be wrapped up. Until then, LG will be gradually slowing down their business. Even after everything is all said and done, you may still see some phones in the wild for sale since it's just a manufacturing side that will be stopping. Gotta sell what's left after all. For those who currently have LG devices, there is nothing to worry about. While production will stop, LG does plan on continuing to support their phones and give them software updates into the future. Looking back at LG, I do have to give them credit for having the courage to be the most experimental with smartphones out of any company I have seen to date. They were ahead of their time, showing how powerful cameras on their phones could be by doing stuff like ultra-wide camera lenses, high-quality selfie cams, and doing it way before anyone else caught on to it. This did work against LG's favor as well, pushing the envelope too far at times, mainly when it comes to trying to make multi-screen phones a thing. Sadly, LG just couldn't make a big enough footprint in the industry to last. It really sucks to see them go. You know what else sucks? The drought going on in Taiwan and how Taiwan had to choose between giving water to 183,000 acres of farland or TSMC. Can you guess which one they chose? If you guessed TSMC, you got it. Yeah, I would hate to be the person who made this call. To be fair, the water is going to the entirety of the science park in Taiwan. Now let's take a look at the reasoning behind the choice. The main point stands that over 90% of all sub 10 nanometer manufacturing happens in said park. If any production would falter, there would be a massive ripple effect throughout a multitude of industries. As for the other reason, the Water Resource Agency of Taiwan considered giving their water to the rice farmers a massive risk. This is due to no guarantee that their yields would come to fruition. Even high expectations showed a much smaller yield compared to normal years. No matter what path is chosen, this is a prime example of a lose-lose situation. It does show as well that many locals being outraged by this choice. I do wish all in Taiwan who have been affected by this drought the best of luck. For the next topic, Intel has some more leaks going on. Thanks to the people over at VideoCards.com and the help of an anonymous tip, we have a sneak peek at what is under the hood of their upcoming EagleStream Xeon CPUs. No doubt the blue team has been playing catch up to the red team for the past couple of cycles, but this does seem to be their largest step forward in a while. We're looking at 56 cores, which may be on Intel's new 10 nanometer die, along with compatibility with DDR5, featuring speeds up to 4800 MHz. On top of that, 80 lanes of PCIe Gen 5 will be included. There is no doubt this is a leap in the right direction, but more ground has to be covered before Intel can touch AMD in this race. Remember, this is all speculation for the moment, so make sure to subscribe to get more news on this in the future. While we're slightly on the topic of AMD, we have a roadmap of what AMD will bring us in 2022. To give a reference of where we are, Vermeer is the Ryzen 5000 series processors. Warhol will be the 6000 series coming out later this year, featuring everything we've seen before, but a die shrink to 6 nanometers, along with a Zen 3 refresh. Where things get exciting is with Raphael, the 7000 series coming in 2022. And I'm talking about a die shrink to 5 nanometers and a new architecture with Zen 4. To accompany this new design, a new socket will be introduced, the AM5 socket. DDR5 compatibility will also be a welcome upgrade along with PCIe Gen 5 compatibility. And to put the icing on the cake, the mainline CPUs will now have an integrated graphics. If this is true, it would finally cover the one glaring issue with AMD CPUs that Intel has been able to dangle over them. Truly, there's nothing like having the system be dead in the water while you're having to find a replacement card for your system. Ask me how I know. If all of this does hold true, this will be the biggest update to the Ryzen processors since their initial release. But as always, take it with a grain of salt. And with that, that's going to do it for this week's tech-related salt. Make sure to like the video, subscribe for more tech content, and hit that notification bell. Follow us on Twitter at tech underscore four underscore thought, 
And if video games are more of your thing, check out our affiliate, cultureofgaming.com, where you can find all the latest gaming news, reviews, and opinion pieces. See you next time.